I yeah. need you to go on record and say you have no idea that the Jews finance slavery. <laughs> but the brothers and sisters today that call themselves Hebrews, they are not disillusioned. They're reading things about them being God's chosen children. They're reading things about the, the illegitimate Jews or the false or the fake Hebrews or the ones that are not God's seed. Brother Harry is on this side, on my left, and he will be defending the Jewish this is going too far. It's going entirely too far. The Jews or Hebrews, correct? The Jews or the Hebrews are the original Jews black or are they white? So as I was saying, the Torah is not specific about what the color was. It's saying the Torah is not specific about what the color was. It's saying the Torah is not specific about what the color was. It's saying the Torah is not specific about what the color was. All right, first and foremost, I give all praises, honor, and glory unto the only true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, and I do so in the name of his only begotten son, the Hamashiach of the nation of Israel, Yahweh Shai. All right, uh, and for the record, the only God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, this devil, Harry Rosenberg, is not authorized to represent in any capacity. So when he made the statement that he came not to represent the Jewish community, but to rather represent the God of Israel, he is a liar. So let that go on the record. All right. So now he plays this game as if color is never really specifically mentioned within the confines of the Torah or the Tanakh. It's the book of Exodus four and starting at six. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom and he took it out. Behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So here we have a man by the name of Moses. All right. A key player in the Torah, the one who gave the Torah to the Israelites from the Most High. This individual was raised in Pharaoh's house, was mistaken for an Egyptian and was raised into Egyptian society. We know the ancient Kemites were black people. So Moses had to himself be a black man. And this verse here in the Torah proves it because it was alarming for him for his hand to be turned leprous as snow or white. Right, And then he put his hand back in his bosom and his melanin was restored by the Most High God. So clearly we see that color is in the Torah. Genesis 42 and 8. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not. All right, so when the sons of Israel, when the sons of Jacob went down into Egypt and they saw their brother again, they did not recognize him because why they mistook him for an Egyptian. So again, we know the ancient commissions were a black people. And understanding this, we have already substantiated that within the first two books of the Torah, two of the most prominent Israelites of all time were also mistaken for Egyptians. So let's not play the game as if the ancient depiction and description of the skin color and characteristics of the Israelites was not identical to that of what you would identify as the ancient Africans. When we take a look on the walls of Egypt, we clearly see depicted black people. When you go to the first page of a book entitled The Pictorial History of Israel, a book that is scholastically authorized by the rabbinical hierarchy of the Israeli Jewish people, the first page shows black people on the walls of Egypt in slavery, and they say that is what the book of Exodus is talking about. So according to their own scholars, the people who Moses led through the Red Sea out of Egypt into the promised land were a black people. So Leviticus 13 and 4. And if the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh. So this is a strange occurrence and it's being spoke about here in the Torah in the book of Leviticus. All right. Within the first three books of the Bible, we already see references to the fact that the ancient Israelite was a black people. Then again, it says, if the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh and in the sight be not deeper than the skin and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him up that he hath the plague seven days. So we see 
that it was looked at as a plague when a whiteness of your skin broke out. But if you were already white, why would it be abnormal for whiteness to break out in your skin? Skipping out of verse 13, still here in Leviticus 13. Then the priest shall consider and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh to where his whole flesh be white, just like how Rabbi Harry Rosenberg look, he shall pronounce him clean that he hath the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. Why? Because it is taken him over. His melanin has been totally stripped from him. Okay. As opposed to in patches or blotches. Right. So we clearly see that these people had to have been a people of color for this to be an abnormality for whiteness to break out in their flesh. Leviticus 13 and 16. Or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed unto white, he shall come into the priest. So again, if it be raw, and that's what you see with these white people, that's why they turn red because typically the sun is aggravating their skin because of its lack of melanin, its deprivation of melanin. So with that being said, it turns raw because the sun is uh, uh, irritating it, right? So it's raw and it's white, but you'll have that reddishness there, right? Just like you saw with the cheeks of Harry Rosenberg as he sat on that couch. So we clearly see that that was something that was outside of the norm of the ancient Israelites because that's how all white people look. So if that happened to an ancient Israelite, they would usually be separated from the rest of their people. Even though there are references to certain colors, most interesting the reference we see to color a theme throughout is found with Adam, whose name Adam is, has a, a red connotation to it, which was the same redness used to describe Esau. The brother of Jacob, which was the same red to, used to describe King David. So so-called Rabbi Rosenberg alleges that the same red that was used to describe Adam is the same that is used to describe Esau and is the same that is used to describe David. As he admitted that in Africa you have a red as if the reddest soil. And that is the color that the people of Israel are described as. To prove that, let's go here to Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. They are what black unto the ground. So they look as the fertile soil looks, period. Now there's an entirely different connotation to the term red that is utilized to describe the physical appearance of Esau. All right. Now understand something. There are over 50 shades of red, but there are not 50 terms of red in the Hebrew language. So in order to differentiate which shade of red is being referenced in any particular uh, passage, we have to take a look at the context of scripture. So now let's go here to Genesis 25, 25, and let's make a quick analysis of the context of the term red here. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Again, like a hairy garment. So the red that Esau was described as is that of like a hairy garment. So let's go to the next book of the Torah, the book of Exodus. To see the first time a hairy garment, a red hairy garment in particular, is referenced in the Bible. This is Exodus 26 and 14. And thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering above badger skins. So ram skins dyed red. The ram skins would be a pure white. And then they would be dyed red with the kermes dye found amongst the trees of the Mediterranean. Okay, from the kermes worm. All right, and that red would be the red of a cherry, the same red of the cheeks of Harry Rosenberg, the same red as the appearance of a Caucasian child when they come out of the womb. It is a scientific fact that Caucasian children are typically red when they come out the womb. And as you now see here on the screen, that would be the color of the description of Esau when he came out of the womb of that black woman. And that's the reason why his physical appearance was emphasized and described in the manner in which that it was here in Genesis 25, because he was abnormal. He was not like his mother and his father and his brother. His appearance was drastically different, hence the necessity to document it in Scripture. So we can have this now so we can identify who the people of the Lord's curse is, who the Edomite is, who the people the Most High hated, who our adversary is. You know, now I know there's different shades of red. I'm, I'm a pale pink red, as your community would call it, but there's also from Africa, there's a dark soil red, and there's different shades of red. So for me, it's, I, th I think it's on purpose that the Torah doesn't stress what color the people of Israel were. Uh, we can assume, though, based on, you know, the time, the location back then, people of Israel were dark-skinned. I don't know if I'm in error. 
I want to ask you, is this true? Does God have an elite group of people or a chosen group of people, uh, namely Israel, or is everybody just on equal playing field there? Uh, it's a great question. So when referring to chosen and not chosen or cursed, that's really up to us because being an Israelite or being part of the people of Israel is not an exclusive club. Um, it was open source for people back then were able to join into it as it says. You know, if you want to subscribe to the wisdom of Israel, you can be considered an Israelite and be included in this thing we call chosen. Well, the people of Israel started with a bloodline, but the, the, the scriptures are very clear that people can join the house of, of God and, and graft themselves in. There's no question about that. Man, Harry, I don't want to um, be too hard on you because I don't want you, I want you to come to the debate. I don't want you to run. We want to hear the truth. And right now, I think you're lying. I'm not going to say you th I think. I'm going to say you're lying because we know what's going on. I want to ask you this question, Harry. Talk about the chosen people of God. What? Who do you say is the chosen people of God? Keep it real. Let's not play games here because we've been hearing the Jews for, for decades saying how they are the chosen people of God. We respect a man's honesty. You're not going to hurt our feelings. We used to this, you know. I want you to keep it real for us, Harry. Who, who you considered to be the chosen people of God. But uh, the chosen people is, is not a race, is not a color, is not someone that comes from a specific region. It is someone who identifies with a certain ideology that comes from the teachings of Moses on the mountain. But the brothers and sisters today that call themselves Hebrews, they are not disillusioned. They are reading things in that book that is intimating that they are the chosen people. They are reading things in that book that is giving them the impression that you guys or somebody else are a cursed people. And now we sit here with you guys, giving us the heal the world story, and I love it. It sounds great and it's amazing. The only problem is, that's not coming out of those books that you guys are reading. Harry Rosenberg alleges that being an Israelite or being a chosen person of God is not something that is at all exclusive, or that is actually very inclusive. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Let's see what the Torah and the Tanakh say about that. And let's see if his ideals are not contradictory of what the book he allegedly subscribes to said. This is the book of Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So above all people has the blood lineage of the nation of Israel been chosen by God to be special unto himself, to be holy. The term holy means separate and he knows that, but he's gonna sit on that couch and he's gonna play a game as if the book that he subscribes to substantiates the ideals that he purports. That is a goddamn lie, all right? But hey, it's all right because the brothers who was in that room Polite and Sonetta, they knew he was full of it because they see us Hebrew Israelites on the streets and they know the scriptures that we read and they know what them scriptures say and they know them scriptures totally go against what he's talking about and they know that if he in fact sees himself as a chosen person of God, as an actual blood descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then he holds these ideals whether he admits it or not. But like the devil, he's going to play that game. Like the devil, he's not going to come out with what he truly believes. Like the devil, he's going to act like it's all good. Leviticus 20 and 26. And ye shall be holy unto me, for I the Lord am holy. Again, holy means separate. And have severed you or cut you from other people that ye should be mine. We have been severed from all the rest of the people of this earth. So yes, Israel is exclusive and it does pertain to one's bloodline. To prove that it pertains to a bloodline, a lineage, a progeny, let's go now back to the book of Deuteronomy. Let's go to the first chapter and the eighth verse. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them and to their seed after them. Not to anybody that tries to cleave unto their seed. It says to give to their seed your seed is your semen if you did not get shot out of the testicles of abraham isaac and jacob you are not of the chosen according to torah do not let this devil bamboozle you let's go now to the tanakh isaiah 41 and 8 but thou israel 
art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So the chosen in the Tanakh says the seed of Abraham, my friend, that's who the chosen is. So when the brother Rich asked, well, wait, it's not a bloodline. You said, well, initially it was a bloodline, but it ultimately was open to everybody, which is nothing but Christian rhetoric. I thought you was a Jew. Now you spewing Christian rhetoric. But anyway, the brother Rich asked, it's not a bloodline. And you said no. But again, according to Isaiah 41 and 8, the chosen mighty prophet Isaiah that the Lord dealt with, the greatest prophet arguably in the Tanakh, who had the largest book in the Tanakh, said again, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. So the chosen are those that are the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's according to the Tanakh. So you may have some type of other idea or you may be telling us that you have this other idea and not even generally have it. But the book you allegedly subscribe to is in total contrast to the statements that you sat on that couch and had the audacity to make. Still in the book of Isaiah in the 65th chapter in the ninth verse. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains. And mine elect shall inherit it and my servant shall dwell there. We already have substantiated in Isaiah 41 and 8 that the servants of God are the Israelites. Right? So again, it says he will bring forth out of the seed of Jacob an inheritor and his elect or his chosen shall dwell there. Not anybody else but the seed of Jacob. So now with that in mind, let's go now to Psalms 147 and the 19th verse. He showed his word unto Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So the word of God that you allege that any people on the earth could subscribe to. The Bible says the truth and the understanding of these words have only been revealed unto Jacob. Okay. And unto Israel, which you are not of. Hence why you do not clearly have an understanding of Torah or Tanakh. Verse 20. He have not dealt so with any nation. So there is no other group of people on the planet earth that the Lord has dealt with outside of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, period. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh. So these other people, according to Psalms 147, have no idea about the truth of the judgments of the Most High. So then how can they cleave unto and follow the doctrine of the judgments that was passed down from Moses? How can they possibly do that if they have not known them? According to the Bible and God have not dealt with them. You see how much of a devil this man is to sit on that couch and make the claims that he made, which are totally against Torah. He's talking about people can graft in. Again, that's Christianity. He's basically saying you can make yourself chosen. How can you make yourself chosen? What's so special about being chosen if everybody can elect to be chosen? No, what makes it special is the fact that you were chosen. That takes away from what it truly means to be chosen. The definition of the word chosen is having been selected as the best or most appropriate. So how do you select yourself now? He's basically saying you can select yourself. See, this is a goddamn lie, man. All right. This is a goddamn lie. And that's why we call the white man the devil, because he is a deceiver. That's all that word means is a deceiver. And that's what he sat on that couch and did. He tried to deceive the masses of our people. But outside of Zionist Lex, we not falling for it, my man. And I know my brothers in the community are not tripping. They are reading things about people being cursed. They're reading things about them being God's chosen children. They're reading things about who who they can have sex with and who they cannot have sex with. They're reading things about the the illegitimate Jews or the false or the fake Hebrews or the ones that are not God's seed and how to deal with them. They are not making these things up. My brothers who I don't oftentimes agree with about certain things, but I'm not gonna sit here and act like the brothers in the community that say they are Hebrews just made all this shit up and you guys got the real perspective because then what was they reading this whole time? And don't tell me that they are disillusioned. Don't tell me they're not reading about chosen people and cursed seeds. But now you come here and no one's cursed. And it doesn't even make a reference to, to blood. There's no bloodline. There's, there's no lingage. There's, the, all of that is moot. It's null and void. We're all a human family. Hell no. It doesn't say that in that book. So this is a lie this is this is where the problem is so it's not so much that he's coming with a doctrine of peace and love 
I don't have a problem with that. It's the fact that he says he's a Jew. It's the fact that he says he makes subscriptions to the Torah. And since he's saying that, the things that he's saying is contradicting the things that are going on within that book. Maybe you don't get this part. This is the part that you got to get. A great deal of the confusion coming in the community is coming out of the religious belief system that you guys subscribe to. Now you get on camera and you are totally oblivious to the sectarian aspect of it, the totalitarian aspect of it, the racial aspect of the doctrine, the cursing of the God, the putting one group of people over another people and now you sit here and you smile in our faces. You actually are smiling. You are looking like you are in in awe or like you are flabbergasted like where is this guy coming from and getting this information? We are not crazy. Hey yo, for the Hebrew says out there man, I want y'all to load up that chat room of all the verses where you guys are the chosen people of Israel. Because for some reason, these guys don't know nothing about that. They never heard of that. This shit is the biggest conspiracy I've ever seen in my life. I've ever heard in my life. I've never seen people subscribe to the Torah totally oblivious to the chosen people of Israel. I've never seen this a day in my life. You guys are amazing for that. So any curse that hits someone is a self-manifested curse, I believe. So... Every curse is self-manifested. You know what that is? That is a deflection of blame for the countless atrocities and crimes committed by his ancestors upon our people. Saying it's a self-manifested curse. Okay? That's probably the same excuse they use to murder Palestinians. It's the same excuse. It's what all these devils do. They blame us for the atrocities and the crimes that they perpetually commit against us. And the buck stops here. We will not allow that to happen. We will not allow you to make that goddamn excuse. Now, according to the Bible, have the Israelites sinned? Yes, we have. According to the Bible, has that rendered us worthy of punishment from the Most High God? Yes, it does. Have curses came upon our people pursuant to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter? Yes, it has. But let's understand something. Does that justify the white man in anything that he has ever done to our people? No, it doesn't. And God does have a special curse out there. And it is on you white people. Okay. And Harry and all the rest of you Jews. I know you constantly are trying to separate yourself from the rest of white people. But you can't. Because you're Edomites just like them. Just because you're from the tribe of Amalek unlike them. That doesn't change the fact that you are the Edomite and the devil that the Bible speaks of. Just like the rest of your Caucasoid brethren. So let's go to the book of Ezekiel and let's see what the prophet Ezekiel said about the white man and about the punishment that he will receive for everything that he has done to the black, Hispanic and native Indian, including the theft of our identity as the Israelites of the Bible. Ezekiel 35, starting in verse five, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time when their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh, the Most High swears by himself. What does he say? I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. So God has guaranteed that blood shall pursue you, meaning you will shed blood for all the blood of the black, Hispanic, and native Indian that you shed. And that includes you, Jew boy. That includes you. That includes your Rosenbergs, your Gettysburgs, your Rothschilds, your Steins, all of them. Because they all had a part in the slavery and in the murder and in the oppression of the black, Hispanic, and native Indian. Verse 7. Thus will I make Mount Seir, which is the capital of Edom. And it's funny because Seir in the Hebrew has a few meanings, one of which is devil and the other is hairy. Isn't that a coincidence? But anyway, thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. So the Lord is going to judge you people for everything that you have done to us talking about a self-manifested curse as if that somehow acquits you and your ancestors and the crimes that you've committed. I, I have love for all humans, so your community, I love them um, because they're humans. And so when you speak about the white man and the black man, you know, maybe I'm, I'm outside of that because I have no hate for anyone. Secondly is, you know, I don't want to play the compare and contrasting game who suffered more, who didn't suffer more. But I would like to say, you know, you're complaining about the white man. My family was in Europe for perhaps 1500 plus years. 
and we have just we spoke about it on the radio interview that we had a horrible experience there of uh, being raped our houses burnt down we weren't allowed to own land uh getting arrested for nothing so i totally understand european brutality because my family's dealing with the trauma of that as well but like i said i'm not here to compare and contrast who suffered more but i will tell you why i oh, okay we could have that competition one day you know who who put it all on paper right i mean yeah right okay I, so I don't know if it's white on white or black on black. It's probably, you know, we looked at it in Europe as the church versus not the church. I find it funny that you think you're outside of the racial divide between black and white and the race war that has been waged upon, especially black people, on every level fathomable, okay? And now you want to talk about, I don't want to play the game of comparing and contrasting who went through a worse oppression and your family was brutalized in Europe. I find it funny. How did Jewish people manage to invent the baking system in Europe that has now conquered the entire planet Earth, established the International Monetary Fund? You know, all these international banks have been established by Jewish people going back to the uh, uh, 14, 15, 1600s. I find it funny that under such harsh and stiff oppression, y'all was able to do that. Y'all was able to, uh, to rob the fortunes of all the royal families of the planet Earth. I find it funny y'all were able to do that under oppression. We sure as hell can't do anything remotely that substantial during our oppression. But y'all were just so oppressed under the European... Man, get the hell out of here, man. That's what you call diverting and deflecting blame that lies upon you. You're nothing but a criminal who has been captured and is now being questioned and examined and an inquisition is being made upon the crimes that you and your cohorts, being your ancestors and your fellow Caucasian brethren have made and all you're doing is trying to blame somebody else and let, let somebody else go down for the crime that you also partook in. Whether you be an accessory after the fact, whether you be a co-conspirator, whatever, you are guilty. Stop running from it. But well, I would like to say, I believe in purpose, you know? And if the African-American human family was brought from Africa to America, it, in the worst conditions ever, which I believe needs to be addressed and needs to be meditated on every day by everyone in this country, what happened, and who benefited off of it, who prospered off of it, and how to fix that. I have my own thoughts on that, but yeah, I do believe there's purpose for it. And imagine if the African-American was never taken from Africa to America, and a bunch of Europeans came here and created evil doctrines and you know, went on for their global, uh, you know, global conquest. You, there may have been no checks and balance system in this country. Now that you do find yourself here and your community spread through every city in this country, imagine what would happen if you unified and you had a voice and a power. What would happen to the justice system in the world? You could bring great things to everyone. So maybe there's purpose that you're here. We don't really have room for imagination because we're dealing with the reality that every time we have tried to unify, the white man, the white race, his institution and his systems have made sure that they've murdered our race, they murdered our leaders. It's very convenient that when we go into the Torah, you say the Torah doesn't specifically identify with race. It's very convenient when we talk to you about oppression, you don't want to identify specifically with race. You want to talk about institutions, but not the people that erected the institutions. You see how sly this devil is? See. He wants us now to view slavery from the perspective that it's a glass half full now. <laughs> As if you know what, this all happened, but it happened so we can bring justice in the world and we can right the wrongs and we can live together in total peace and harmony under a rainbow coalition. We are the world, everybody joining in hand. <laughs> That's the devil right there. See, in order to pacify any anger that we as a people would reasonably have towards his people, he comes with this soft spokenness and he comes with this ideology that our slavery was a glass half full so we can right the wrongs that the church, the oppressive church that has forced everybody into Christianity, right? We got to blame them. You're the devil just like them, okay? Let's go to the book of Proverbs 21 and 14 because we are not ignorant of Satan's devices as it says in the New Testament. And this is just one of the devices of Satan. It's Proverbs 21 and 14, a gift in secret pacifieth anger and a reward in the bosom strong wrath so all he is trying to do is give us gifts by telling us things that sound pleasant to our ears or alleging that he's coming to help or alleging that he wants to be equal with us or he's tired of the fact that he ain't getting the same benefits as certain of his jewish brethren 
So he said, you know what? They, they, they got me at the bottom of Jewish society. I'm not really benefiting like the rest of them. So uh, you know what? I'm going to go appeal to the black man to try to pacify his anger, to try to join up with him so we could disperse the wealth a little bit more. So I can get it too, because I am not getting mistreated by my own people. Woe is me. Woe is me. All he's trying to do is pacify our anger. All right. All he's trying to do is escape the punishment that he rightfully deserves. Fellow brother, why, why a plethora of Jews consecrated areas adjacent to the poor black community to do their own thing and live separate? And I ain't mad at you. Up until the point where you tell me I'm your brother and you all love us. So since you love us and we're all brothers, why is there a Jewish community separate and different and adjacent from the black community? Where is the helping hand that I see you coming into the community with? Where's the love? Again, you still got to address the race issues and we have to stop playing pretend because in Israel there's people who identify themselves as Hebrews still to present day being oppressed. Okay. And then secondly, the only reason they were able to get any kind of land is because they said, we'll join your military. And in exchange of them joining Israel's military, concessions were made for them to have a space to live in, which are not even conducive for human beings. They're, and they are serving, and they love to serve, because they believe their army is bringing freedom to the world. And the technology coming out of Israel because of such a good army is what's going to end up saving us. I want y'all to analyze what that cracker just said. He said the African-Americans that are in Demona are serving and love to serve. You hear that? They are serving and they love to serve because what's going to save us is the Israeli army and technology. So he's insinuating that us as black people should serve them because what they are doing is pioneering technology that's going to save the world. So all he's trying to do is give us a goddamn white messiah and have us stand on the front lines and live and die for this white messiah. That's all he's doing. The same exact thing the church does, which he claims to be so much different than. This is the devil that the Bible speaks of. I am going to continually reiterate that. And not just the devil, but as the book of Revelations 2 and 9 says, the synagogue of Satan. You understand that? The synagogue of Satan. That's what Yahweh Shai, who the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ, a black man, referred to the mass, meaning the chief house of the devil. So they are even more devilish than the church that they claim to be so much different than and so much better than. The book of Lamentations 4 and 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. He's acting like he's going to help and save us, but that is vain. And our people are constantly counting on this damn devil to come and give us some type of help or salvation. And our eyes continually fail and we continually get our hopes up only to be disappointed because this devil refuses to help us. Because he doesn't care about us and we are stupid as hell for ever having faith in this devil. And our watching we have watched for a nation that could not save us. The Bible says that our people would have a problem and this mental disorder to where we would continually watch for a group of people to save us that cannot. Yet he alleges that we should happily serve their goddamn army because they're going to save us. Massa going to save us. That is repulsive. We should all be outraged and appalled at the audacity of this devil. But that's why we have to watch him. His subtility and his cunning. He's going to talk softly to try to pull the wool over our goddamn eyes, man. Open your eyes. As the book of Revelation speaks, let your eyes be anointed with eye salve so you can see through the darkness that this devil is purporting and propagating, man. And understand what he's saying. He's saying that we should serve his people and his people is what's going to save us. Okay, but I'm just going to say very quickly, fortunate for you, fortunate for everyone in the room, I am the Jew who felt your pain and said, how can I live in a house when I see what's happening next to us? And I am the Jew who has a plan and I've taken actions and I'm going to present it. So wait a minute, fortunately, it's a fortune to us that there's one Jew in Harry Rosenberg who took a look at our pain and said, you know what? There's something wrong with that. I want to do something about that. I want to help those people. You see that white Messiah complex that he has? Fortunately for us, it's good for us. We should, we should worship his God and praise his God, which is not the God of Israel for the record. Okay, the Jews, the rabbis have already went on record on several occasions and said that their God is Satan. But anyway, 
but he is basically insinuating that we should serve his God because he's the Jew that has compassion on us. He's the Jew that wants to help us. So we should just embrace this Jew and we should just conform to his Judaic religion, which is against the Torah. And we should serve him and serve his people. You see that white Messiah complex? But that's what the church did. But the church is so wicked. You're the same as the goddamn church. The same as your demonic devil Edomite brethren. You may fulfill that biblical prophecy, right? Deuteronomy 28, 68, getting brought on ships, right? Very, very, very amazing. It all lines up. It's beautiful. That doesn't mean that other people around the world also aren't part of the house of Israel, as the verses say. So I feel when I'm speaking to the, the African-American Israelite, they're kind of saying, we are the chosen people, but that implies that no one else is. In the words of J. Electronica, who happens to be in a relationship with a Jewish girl, a Rothschild at that, the synagogue of Satan want to keep us confused, that's how we lose. And that's all this devil has attempted to infiltrate our community and do. Keep us confused so we lose, especially because he sees the Hebrew Israelites through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahusha, reaching the heights that we are. The knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of this Bible spreading throughout the four corners of the earth through the spirit and power and grace of the Most High God. So they have to come and attempt to infiltrate and sow seeds of discord and confusion. But you will not prevail over the plan of the Most High God, which is the awakening of the 144,000 and the assembling of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the problem we talk about. So if you love us so much, render back onto the people that which was taken. That's all we saying. If it is so real, because you don't receive no gold, and yes you do, you have been receiving concessions from that which your ancestors have done for the longest. If you truly want to redeem yourself before the people, what y'all going to do is say, you know what, I can't live another day in this beautiful home. I can't live another day on this beautiful land. Because I believe you're not the one living next to the toxic waste like the brothers that are living there next to some white folks. I believe you're wise enough not to live next to nothing like that. I believe that you should understand at this point in conversation that inevitably you are still reaping the benefits directly and indirectly from that which your ancestors have done. While we are also, the stress has been incurred perpetually from one generation to the next from that which has been done to us in light of your ancestors. Though other people's ancestors have capitalized off our oppression as well. So if you love us so much like you say, and you are talking about a doctrine of karma, the question is, can the child's child's child still obtain that which has been stolen without being held accountable for it? While another people are here in their diaspora suffering and displaced only conceiving what life may have been like had these events not transpired how then can you sit here and say i'm not reaping none of the benefits of course you are so instead of the love doctrine it's very easy you know i can't live another day like this keep the house I'm gonna go in the hood. I'm gonna start eating rice and wings. I'm gonna start drinking the 50 cent soda. I can't do this no more. That's what we talking about. Keep it real, Harry, keep it real. So now, let's go here and let's talk about a curse. A curse that this devil constantly avoided. The brother said, Polite said, we know the brothers read in that Bible about a curse, that they're the chosen and that your people are the curse, the false Jew. So let's now go to the book of Isaiah in the 34th chapter and let's read about the Edomite and the curse that God has against him, the Most High Yahweh. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia or Edom, and upon the people of my curse. So God has a curse against you white people. He has pronounced a judgment against you white people. According to the book of Malachi and Romans, he hates you, okay? To judgment, verse six, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with the fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of kidneys of ram. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. That is a prophecy 
of the Most High slaughtering the Edomite or the white man. If you go to Isaiah 63, you can read another prophecy about the coming Messiah, a black Messiah returning back to the earth, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, and how he will stain his white garments with the blood of the Edomite or the white man. That's the curse that God has on you damn white people. So with that, all praise is honor and glory unto Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. I'm going to let Jay Electronica take us out. Shalom. Instead of snipping lines, popping thongs in Ibiza, Ether. Nigga, are we not thy brother's keeper? Allah Akbar, Avra Kadabra. We use what we had to stay alive like Magaba. Started from the bottom, now we really, really here. Started kind of blurry, now we really, really clear. It's the Nat King unforgettable. Black King on the pedestal. The way he made words in the edibles was incredible. Verbs and spices, giving life out to the lifeless. Giving Christ out to the Christless. My handle with the dice has been documented as priceless. I roll sevens naturally. Devils who used to laugh at me, bow to me, and to nasty. Rappers I gave birth to, shot at the guard, blasphemy. Told these motherfuckers they'll never Jimmy Degrassi me. This goes out to those that choose to use disrespectful views on original Jews. The chosen people of God getting slandered and abused in the streets and the news by the seed of Yakub. The synagogues of Satan want to keep us confused, that's how we lose. Niggas got the ill street blues. From Chirac to England, me and Common dropping bombs like the baby planes as we establish the kingdom.